You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Ask Drone You. As always and forever, my name is Paul. My name is Rob, and uh, yeah, always and forever, I suppose, unless somebody's mad at me, then they might change my name. But unless you get docs, then you might, you know, get get your name changed. Yeah, I don't know. It happens. Anyway, we got a we got a question today about uh, about managing uh, cold weather, high altitude flights. So if you are living in the Rocky Mountains, the Smoky Mountains, the Sierra Nevada Mountains, or mountains in general. Then, uh, yeah, anywhere in the world. <laughs> yeah, you really. might find this useful. <laughs> uh, but I mean, battery management is a real problem. And as our Mavics age, uh, some of you might get the warning of, uh, what well, I forget exactly the language of the warning, but it's like uh, battery position error, I believe is what it says. And then mm. the battery has detached or somehow. I had this happen to me with my Mavic 2 Pro. Uh, in the Outer Banks over the ocean. And uh, it's it's very scary. And you gotta you gotta baby the bird home and get it home fast. Hmm. So otherwise the battery pops out and you lose the entire aircraft. Goodbye. Mm, not fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not fun. Anyway, uh, today's question is brought to you by the bald headed bureau over here to my right. <laughs> um, we've got a couple of live classes coming up, as many of you know. Check them out on the droneu.com. And if you would, instead of us going in depth into sponsors, we want you, the audience, to sponsor us. And the way that you can do that is by writing a review in iTunes, Spotify, wherever you download the show. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, as many of you know, uh, I had a lot of learning to do in this last year and uh, on numerous fronts, actually, personal and professional. Uh, that said, mm. I've got my energy back after doing a lot of uh, humble learning and excited to be back here with you. And I hope that you find the shows a little bit more energetic. We're also gonna be uh, doing a little bit of a different segment and really highlighting many of you and showcasing what all of you are doing. Uh, and if you'd like to support us, you can do it in one of two ways. Leave us a review, like I already said, or you can become a member of Drone U. I think that you'll find that the content is always evolving. It's always being added to, and you're never paying for additional content. And you can also support the show via membership. Uh, and as iTunes moves into paid podcasts, etc., I think uh, it's much, much better if we just stick to membership on our site. Anyway, there's our, there's our diatribe. All right, cool. We'd love to see you at any of our events. And uh, yeah, thank you for listening. Hey guys, it's Sean from Mons Drone Company up in Whistler, British Columbia. Uh, first off, thanks for all you do with Drone U. I've found uh, being a member super useful. I've learned a ton uh, from all the classes and videos you guys have. So thanks for that. My question is around uh, drone flights in the winter. I'm flying above 2,000 meters. So say, you know, above seven, 8,000 feet um, in winter environments, snowy environments with a Mavic 2 Pro. And uh, I was looking for some tips to keep my whole setup warm. Um, I've had a lot of trouble with my iPhone just shutting down mid-flight because it gets too cold while I'm standing on ridgetops. Also wondering about ND filters. I'm using an ND32 filter to capture my raw photos and videos and just wondering your thoughts on that. Thanks again for all you do. Looking forward to hearing your answer. Thank you for the question, Sean. Appreciate it. AskDroneU.com is where you can go to get your question in. You know, when I first heard this, I was thinking, man, it's kind of an interesting time to be asking a question about winter. Granted, this question came in uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, but nonetheless, then I started thinking, well, he is in Canada. <laughs> so winter probably lasts <laughs> a little bit longer, certainly than where we are here in New Mexico. So I suppose it's valid depending on where you're at. And then obviously there are other parts of the world that are winter when we're summer. So like how Australia is going into winter right now? Yeah. So ultimately, this could be useful to people in various parts of the world, even though we're starting to warm up here. So it is why nice. not? It is so nice that it's warming up, too. I just got to it say, is. it's especially as things are reopening, at least Texas is fully reopened back in New Mexico right now. But 
Um, it is just so nice. It's so it's so good to see smiles. It's so <laughs> good to just see people being social. The world is bright and sunny, rainbows and unicorns again. Okay, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> there. You know, our caller. By the way, thank you for the question. And if you have a question, ask droneu.com. Um, but this particular question actually has a lot more uh, validity, being that he's at high altitude. So two thousand mm. meters is about sixty five hundred feet. Uh, and actually, at my house is at 6,100. Yours is 59 or so-ish. Yeah. And so we're right here in that kind of ballpark of altitude and understand how um, flying in this altitude provides challenges and problems that people who are flying in California or along the eastern seaboard simply do not face. And this is also why in the previous podcast I was talking about what I love teaching from experience at DroneU is that we teach from a lot of different environments. And this is just a perfect example mm -hmm. of why we're able to speak to this. So first and foremost, the main concern that he has to have at flying at that altitude and cold temperatures uh, is that he is actually discharging or sucking amperage out of that battery faster than pilots at lower altitude. It's kind of a double whammy, right? That altitude and cold? 100% a double whammy. And what this means is that you are not going to get as many cycles out of the battery as other people, other pilots. <clears throat> but it also means you're going to have to deep cycle your batteries more often. And it also means that you need to be very cognizant of how you use these batteries because on a Mavic 2 Pro, mm. as we know, when these batteries swell up, they can pop off like we were just talking about. Yep. So a couple of things. Um, number one on your iPhone, let, let's go over a couple of things that you can do. Number one on your Mavic 2 Pro, turn phone charging on. Because this way, when your phone is getting charged actively, it should actually heat up the battery a little bit. Number two that I want to talk to you about is with your Mavic 2 Pro, buy Mavic 2 Enterprise batteries, not Mavic 2 Bro Pro batteries. Why? They're self-heating batteries. So you're going to protect the drone in that sense. Hmm. Quick shout out to one of our courses, Flying in Cold Environments. We go over a specific formula that if you don't have self-heating batteries, you can do this with your drone before you actually fly for a mission. Part of it involves flying, but at a very low altitude. And you can heat those batteries up so you can get more uh, juice out of them. This also goes to why rule number three of our rules of takeoff and landing, but specifically in this sense, rules of takeoff is all about testing your batteries because at the end of the day, you can read so much more or, or, or get a better indication of the health of your battery from battery voltage than you can battery percentage mm -hmm. because voltage is affected at altitude. It's also double whammy affected altitude and cold, right? right? Another thing, you know, we've had all these like articles and videos about uh, cold weather flying. Those sticky heating pads, not or, uh, hot hands, but yeah. they're specifically the sticky version. Okay. If you hmm. stick those on the back of your phone and on the sides of your remote, so your hands are kind of bulging out a little bit, I find that that's enough for me to not use gloves. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. A better solution, because maybe I am a little crazy, is what I call the Nick Lang solution, which is, I think it's on Hobby King. You can buy this, uh, it's on Amazon too. You can buy this cover. It's like that, a hood. It's like a hood for your remote and yeah. your hands go in it. So it's like keep, it's like a piece of clothing for your remote in your hands. I dig it. I mean, you got to know your remote pretty well, but you should be practicing enough such that you do, right? Agree. That's so a good, that's matter. a very important point. Actually, I've never thought of. <laughs> you better know, well, your, remote you really know well. your remote really well. Yeah. I mean, uh, again, it just never occurred to me. It goes right. back to how do you take an experienced pilot and turn him into an instructor? Because it's quite, it's quite a task. Um, but that said, another thing that I want to tell you is you really should look into um, deep cycling your batteries more frequently. So like I would deep cycle my batteries probably every four to five flights instead of every 10. 
just because you really want to make sure that you are treating the health of that battery as best as you can. Mm -hmm. Um, Another thing is because you're at high altitude, you might want to baby the bird a little bit. Uh, what do I, why do I say that? Again, because you're at higher altitude. It is colder. This means that you are pulling more amperage out of the battery. When you fly slower and when you fly in attitude mode, you use less battery power. Two things to note. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't hmm. go easy on my batteries. If anyone knows me personally and who's seen me fly knows that I am the antithesis of babying my drone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, that said, when you're up at high altitude, these are things you really do want to consider. So just to kind of, I'm going to hit all those points in a quick recap. Number one, by self-heating batteries that are typically advertised and marketed for the Mavic 2 Enterprise instead of the Mavic 2 Pro. Two, uh, on your remote, make sure phone charging is turned on to keep your uh, your phone warm. If that still doesn't work, the sticky version of the hot hands, you know, he- heating pads. Um, also, you want to make sure that you're deep cycling your batteries more frequently. And um, if you haven't checked out our cold weather class uh, in membership, we do have the formula of how to heat up batteries in a specific formulaic motion of takeoffs and landings. Or you can also leave your battery and your phone uh, uh, on the dash of your car and have those warming up while you're going out to a particular mission. And then one thing I want to add that I kind of forgot, and I just did this when I was uh, on the East Coast and it got cold, that so if you haven't watched our operations course, we showcase this really cool modular system of our mobile kit. And our mobile kit has all the things that we need to support field operations. And uh, we found this really great modular uh, storage containing system made by DeWalt that we that I have in my truck. I even gave you some to put in yours. Um, well, actually, the business gave them to you. So good job, Rob. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. They're getting used. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But the DeWalt makes a cooler that is a part of this modular system. And the cooler is actually good for five days. And you might want to consider, you know, putting all your equipment that you're about to go fly with in that cooler. Yeah. Because it will keep it somewhat uh, warm. And actually, this reminds me, this was part of one of our new augmented reality scenario trainings was how mm. do you keep your stuff warm anyway? So would you put your batteries, for example in the cooler and you could even use one of those soft sided coolers for what you're talking about and then put those hand warmers in there with the cooler. Yeah. I mean, uh, is I would, that overkill or it seems it, it might be overkill. I don't, I don't know. In some environments it's probably not overkill, yeah, you depending know, on how cold it is up in Canada. Another probably th- okay. Yeah, that's true. Another thing that we talk about though, is leaving our equipment inside until the absolute moment that we're ready to depart. Yeah. If the cooler is in your 70 degree home all night long, and then you go outside with it, it is going to retain heat that all that insulation inside is going to retain that heat. So sure. it's just, it's like the opposite of putting ice in there again. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Seems like a no brainer, really. Yeah. I mean, eh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that we think would be no brainer, but we don't learn until we're slapped in the face with reality. That's why we're here. <laughs> Which I am slapped in the face a lot with reality. So anyway. Me too. We're trying to keep you from being slapped in the face. A hundred percent. That's our goal. That, Amen. We do not want you to be slapped in the face. No. Anywho. Yeah, lower that learning curve here at Drone ND filters. ND32 he's using up there. Ah, I forgot that part of the I question. I almost forgot as well. So, <laughs> But here we are. On, honestly, I would not go that extreme with the ND filters. Hmm. Um, I would probably keep it at an 8 or a 16, depending on which drone I was flying. When he's flying the two pro, Mavic the 2 Pro. The 2 Pro, which is the Hasselblad sensor. Yeah, I, ugh, it really depends. A bright full sun, lots of snow, probably the 16. Overcast, though, and bright snow, I'd probably stick with an 8. Um, I think the 32 is probably going to make his shadows a little too dark. Mm-hmm. Um, and that might make for a lot of work in post, especially on videos. Um, but ND filters, I mean, he's right on track, right? Brilliant, brilliant idea to use ND filters uh, when flying over the snow in super cold environments. I'm not sure I would go 32, though. I might be, again, you might find your shadows are just a little too dark. Experiment. Yeah, experiment for sure. But again, bright snow, overcast day, I'd probably stick to a 4 or an 8. Bright snow, bright sun, probably a 16. I don't know, though. The 32 seems a little extreme to me. Hmm. Do you ever use a 32? No. 
Oh, no, there um, there's a time where I use like, what is it? The ND 100 from Polar Pro, but that's to shoot uh, slow shutter speed photos uh, mm. in bright sun. So you get the kind of um, cascading water effect. If it's that... for a very specific effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there are so many videos on YouTube. Use the ND 1000, the ND this. And I'm just like, you know, $100 for that little filter that might get used one time. <laughs> I'm not, I'm well, not so sure. If it's a $100 filter and you get a $1,000 shot, well, then maybe it's worth it. Then business expense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's always about that cost-benefit analysis. That is so true. <laughs> and if you want to learn more about that, then you got to check out the business course here at Drone You, also included for members. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks again for joining us. As always, this is Ask Drone You. 